fresh blueberries, one pint package, hot price $3.99. Fresh Purdue chicken thighs, just $1.99 per pound. Freshly baked hamburger or hot dog rolls, eight pack, hot price $3.99. Kellogg's single serve breakfast cereal, 1.5 ounce cup, only $1.39. Armor Hammer liquid laundry detergent, 50 ounce, hot price $5.70. All stores open Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You're watching Bermuda Tonight. It's Wednesday, the 27th of June. I'm Jasmine Patterson, and thanks for joining us tonight. Two families are mourning the passing of loved ones tonight as the death toll on the roads for the year reaches six. This follows a two-vehicle collision on St. John's Road in Pembroke and the death of another man in a separate collision at the weekend. Gary Moreno tells us more. This was the scene on St. John's Road in Pembroke as police traffic investigators tried to piece together the evidence that might reveal what happened in this collision which claimed the life of the motorcycle rider. Police Public and Media Relations Manager Dwayne Keynes provided us some details of the tragic incident. At 10.35 this morning, police and first responders attended a report of a serious road traffic collision. Now that collision took place on St. John's Road in the area of Gorham's. Upon police arrival, it was ascertained that a 59-year-old man was traveling west on that said road when it appears that he lost control of his vehicle and collided with a car traveling in the opposite direction. That man was taken to KEMH where he subsequently was pronounced dead. Mr. Keynes though was clearly disturbed by something which occurred in the immediate aftermath of the fatal collision and which has troublingly now become the norm despite the insensitive nature of the practice. We are asking members of our community, if you come to a scene and a person is compromised, first of all, think before you act. Do not pull out your phone and take that image because that image puts us all at risk. First, it's insensitive to the family and B, it could compromise integrity of an investigation. We're simply asking you to think before you post. Mr. Keynes reminding that we're approaching a period of higher than normal road use and that means there is a need for heightened awareness by road users. Unfortunately, during summer, Months we noticed with the sun out, with uh, the swell of individuals on the road from our uh, tourist community as well as uh, students home from school, the amount of activity that's happening on our roads, the numbers tend to swell in the summer periods. We see the greatest increase of fatalities during our summer months and during Christmas time. So again, our message is very clear. Speed kills, inattention on the roads kill, ask, and alcohol consumption and drug consumption whilst operating vehicles kill. We're asking for people to slow down on the roads. A life you may save indeed may be your very own. Meanwhile, police have confirmed the death of the 66-year-old Devonshire man who was seriously injured when the pedal cycle he was riding collided with a motorcyclist at around 11.50 p.m. on Saturday. This on Middle Road in Devonshire near the junction with Thesey Street. Inquiries into this incident continue and police are asking any witnesses to please come forward and reach out to them on the main police number 2950011. And more sad news. The well-known poet and musician Ronald Lightbourne has been identified as the 71-year-old man who died suddenly this week. Mr. Lightbourne was found in an unresponsive state in the swimming pool of a, re of a residence on Forest Hill Drive in Warwick on Tuesday. Despite efforts to save him at the scene, he was later pronounced dead at the hospital. Police say his passing was not suspicious, but an autopsy is anticipated. A man convicted of causing the death of an aspiring model by careless driving was today jailed for 18 months and banned from driving for five years. Clinton Smith fell asleep behind the wheel of a Dunkley's dairy truck and caused a crash that killed Sophie Fraser-Smith. 
21-year-old Sophie Fraser-Smith was killed on her motorcycle on July 18th last year on Middle Road near Scenic Heights in Southampton. Truck driver Clinton Smith fell asleep and drifted into the westbound lane, causing a head-on collision. Prosecutors argue today that Smith did not negotiate the bend, that his driving was grossly inattentive, and he was wholly responsible for the victim's death. Nicole Smith, prosecuting, said the defendant expressed half-hearted remorse for the victim and her family during the trial and that the sentence should be harsh to deter careless driving. She sought two years jail plus a five-year driving ban. Defense lawyer Elizabeth Christopher suggested six months imprisonment, rejecting the notion that Smith could have intentionally fallen asleep at the wheel. She also pointed to his previous good behavior and reminded the court of Smith breaking down in tears on the stand as proof of his remorse. Ms. Christopher added, quote, he had relapsed, having worked hard at his sobriety. Smith gave lengthy testimony before hearing his fate, telling the court that he empathized with the mother of Sophie as he too is a parent. He said, quote, I never meant for this to happen. It's not easy for me to forgive myself, but I hope they find it in their hearts to forgive me. Sorry is too weak a word. Acting Justice Juan Wolf said based on Smith's demeanor during trial and his testimony today, the defendant was truly remorseful for what he'd done. But however bad he might feel, it paled in comparison to the loss felt by Sophie's family. Justice Wolf said driving standards are deplorable in Bermuda, and this was a tragic case of a life of a budding individual cut short. Smith was jailed for 18 months with time in custody taken into consideration. He was also banned from driving any vehicles until 2023. Two former leading figures in the Corporation of Hamilton, along with a developer and his wife, face corruption charges in connection with the Parlerville Hotel development. Former Mayor Graham Outerbridge and former Chief Operating Officer Ed Benavides were today charged with corruptly agreeing to obtain property on behalf of the developer Michael McLean and his wife Yasmin. It's alleged they authorized the release of over $15 million held in a New York bank account to their Clarion bank account in 2014. The three men are also charged with dishonestly obtaining funds from an account belonging to Mexico Infrastructure Finance. The McLeans were also accused of stealing over $13 million belonging to an MIF account. The defendants were granted bail of $250,000 each. More after this short break, including the latest on the rubbish collection schedule and all the latest weather news. Stay with us. Hey, Smokey, let's get lunch from the Marketplace Food Court. You know what? That sounds good. They have oxtails, pumpkin, corret lamb, lemon chicken, sweet and sour ribs, vegetable stir-fry, and the variety goes on. Their chefs are good. They'll set you right up with all the good carbons. And don't forget the special dishes from the island. It don't matter. Well, no matter what you feel like eating, Marketplace will have it. You know, it's quick, it's quality, and at prices you can count on. Visit us seven days a week. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Made for you daily at the Hamilton Marketplace Food Court. Blurry-eyed following your eye appointment? Had one too many? Or simply too tired to face the drive home at the end of a long night? There are lots of reasons why you couldn't and shouldn't get behind the wheel. Introducing HomeSafe from Security Associates, the island's only car and driver home delivery service. We schedule with us, and a HomeSafe driver will deliver you and your car right to your door. Whatever your reason for not driving, you can always get HomeSafe. Call 298-2626 for pricing and to find out how you can become a member. Or visit homesafebermuda.com. Terms and conditions apply. Hi, Gary. Hi, Deshane. Thank you for taking the time to show me your car today. Oh, my pleasure. This is the uh, Kia Soul EV, mm -hmm. and that EV stands for electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. I picked the Kia Soul because it didn't look like an electric car. It looked like a regular car. Mm -hmm. And what would you say are some of the key benefits of the electric car? The number one is the money saved. It rides smooth as can be. I'm sure, again, an electric vehicle is one of my best decisions. Welcome back. Trash will be collected once a week for the rest of the year instead of returning to the twice a week schedule. That announcement came today from the Minister of Public Works, Colonel David Birch. In a press conference this afternoon, he said that there was a growing acceptance of the switch to weekly collections. The reality is we cannot contemplate a return to twice a week collection anytime soon with the limited vehicles available. So once a week garbage collection will continue at least until the end of the year. Long before we reach that point, however, we will have concluded all the background necessary to make a firm recommendation to Cabinet on the way forward to be followed shortly thereafter with a public announcement. Immediately, though, 
there will be some minor adjustments to the collection schedule for some areas to minimize the need for overtime work in those zones. In short, they are. Monday collection, the easternmost boundary will move from Church Road to Waterlot on Middle Road to Sinky Bay on South Shore Road. Tuesday collection from Cubs Hill to Chapel Road, S Hill and Southcote Road. Wednesday from Trimmingham Hill to T Street and Thursday from T Street to Devils Hill. The Friday collection zone remains the same. Those adjustments will become effective after the cup match holiday on August 6th. A map of the new boundaries will be published along with an extensive media campaign to advise of those changes. After a mixed day of both sun and showers, here's our AccuWeather forecast for tonight. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. The BFNM Insurance Group is pleased to bring you tonight's AccuWeather forecast. I'm AccuWeather meteorologist Brittany Boyer, and hopefully you're having a great Wednesday. We're halfway through the work week. However, we are still going to have to deal with some unsettled times as we get closer to the weekend. We've had lots of clouds around today. It's been on the humid side. And what we had happen is this cold front pressed through yesterday. This actually brought us about a half of an inch of rain, but this front is now stationary, so it's not moving a whole lot. And because it's still sitting Sitting somewhat close to us, we're still going to have some unsettled weather, so showers and also thunderstorms as well. And that's really exactly what we've been seeing so far today. So uh, just know that we're still going to have some showers and storms around and perhaps even some steady rain at times as well. Looking at some of the current conditions right now, we are in the upper 70s. Humidity, it's up there in the 70s and into the eight, low 80s, near 80 percent. Winds are coming in out of the east. 15 to 20 knots, and that's also aiding to all the clouds that we're dealing with uh, throughout today. The water temperature sitting at 82 degrees. If you're heading out in the water the next couple of days, it's going to be a little bit choppy outside of the reef, and you're also going to be dodging a couple of showers as well. We don't have any marine alerts to tell you about, at least at this point. You can see your tidal times right here. High tide coming in at 9.09 .09 this evening, and then we have low tide Thursday morning at 3.32. And we can take a look at our future cast and see what we expect as we head into the next couple of days. Again, that frontal boundary is just off to our south, and as I mentioned, as it's kind of sitting there, it's going to activate all of these showers and also the possibility of those thunderstorms. So heading into your Thursday, it stays humid with winds coming in out of the south. And yes, it stays unsettled with those clouds and also those showers as well. So really, as we head right into the weekend, we have showers in the forecast at least through Saturday. So make sure you're staying with us here for the latest weather updates as we get closer to the weekend. For tonight, it'll be a little bit breezy outside. Temperatures stay in the mid-70s. Couple of passing showers for tonight, and then we will see some showers tomorrow. It's really late in the day tomorrow, getting into the evening and also into Friday that things are going to be getting a bit more active with that steadier rain and also the threat for some thunderstorms. A high of 82 degrees for tomorrow, a low of 75 degrees. If you're doing any traveling, here's a look at the Gateway forecast. In New York, showers and storms, same goes for Boston. And it's that time of the year in the southeast. We do have some storms in the forecast in Atlanta. Checking things out here in Jamaica. Beautiful outside right now. Partly sunny. Temperatures near 90 degrees. And we are in the upper 80s in Barbados. So the theme here as we head into the weekend is unsettled thanks to that front nearby. Again, Thursday night into Friday, we could see some steadier rain. And we'll allow for a few showers as we head into this weekend. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group. This summer I was in Germany on holiday with my family and on a whim one day my son and I joined a speed sliding competition and as I came down the water slide I went straight down in the pool and whacked my left foot on the bottom of the pool and I looked down and I didn't see a foot. I just saw the bone sticking out and I started to feel faint. I was ambulanced to a hospital where I stayed for 11 days and had surgery. I had snapped all the ligaments on both sides of my ankle. And in the middle of all this stress and pain, we thought, how are we going to deal with health insurance? How will we pay for this? And I got a response from Allison at BFNM and she said, your 
admission and surgery will be covered at 100%. I didn't have to put it on a credit card and deal with the reimbursement later. It made such a big difference to us. And for me, the BFNM difference is stress-free insurance when I really needed it. I attended the Mirror Super Camp. It was an awesome experience. I got to meet a lot of new people. And then we also learned about the eight keys of excellence. Keys of doors, keys, keys of doors. Super Camp is not like other camps. There's a strong focus here about looking at the options and the choices you have available to you and choosing the one that best reflects who you are. I learned a lot about the way that I have to keep pushing and pressing for no matter what's going on. The best thing about Super Camp? It allows you the space to truly be yourself. Anytime somebody finally came into their own presence and felt comfortable being who they were, that was a special moment for me at Supercamp. Supercamp is about exploring who you are and transforming yourself. It only gets better! We invite you to join the transformation of a generation. New Police Commissioner Stephen Corbishley will have his work cut out for him once he takes over in a matter of days. There are a number of ongoing issues affecting the island's police service which are reportedly resulting in low morale among the ranks. Once again, Gary Moreno has the story. Those in the know suggest the new commissioner is taking command of a service afflicted by low morale. What with purportedly insufficient resources as a result of budget cuts and continued grievances over the lack of a real succession plan. Mr. Corbishley, though, not put off by such talk. Certainly my engagement over the past few days, and of course I am the commissioner and perhaps people are going to tell me things that they want me to hear, but I work in a way that is not about perhaps corporate meetings. I've spoken to staff individually and at length and understood some of their views. There are challenges. There are challenges around making sure that they've got the best and right equipment to do their job. There are challenges in regards to making sure that we recruit against vacancies we hold. That's in my area of responsibility and those are the things I'm going to do. But the feedback I've had is very, very positive and very committed. That said though, the new commissioner makes it clear he's not taking anything for granted. And one of the things that I'll be doing in working with the deputy on my arrival is a very clear engagement with staff, understand what their needs are, get to the heart of what they need to perform their role and respond. Because at the end of the day, the BPS needs officers that are happy, positive, confident and able to do their job. And I will achieve that and that will make a significant difference to the way in which we're able to deal and respond with the public. One area in which the island's new top cop will have to bring his extensive experience to bear is in dealing with claims of preferential treatment among the ranks. With white British officers supposedly treated more favorably than their Bermudan counterparts, with black West Indian officers reportedly at the bottom of the pecking order. So I'm a listening commissioner uh, and I will uh, deal with those issues. Above all, officers need to be professional uh, and diversity works two ways. Diversity works in regards to services we provide and it's a, a professional Special expectation in regards to how officers work together but let, let me throw something back at you um, actually there's a lot of value in that there's a lot of value in different opinion there's a lot of value in different cultural outlooks uh, Bermuda is has different types of communities it has a resident community it has a visiting community it has a working community uh, and I think that actually equips us really well to be responsive and understand those needs and be able to deliver our services better so I recognize your point and it's an area I'll look at I'll have clear expectations around it but actually it's an opportunity for us to be better Mr. Corbishley says he will build on the good work started by his predecessor Michael de Silva. And while he is aware of concerns that Government House has operational control over a government-funded Bermuda Police Service, that will not in any way influence his efforts to make Bermuda safer. 
I have operational independency in regards to how policing uh, is delivered. Uh, and whilst clearly strategy and direction will be set, the way in which the service will be led alongside myself and the deputy will be quite clear in regards to our independence. Gary Moreno, reporting for the Bermuda Broadcasting News. A group of Bermudian teens are off on potentially life-changing trips this week. They're taking part in two Rally Bermuda expeditions to Nepal and Tanzania. But before they set out, they got together with some of Rally Bermuda's alumni at the Bermuda Broadcasting Studio to tell us about their upcoming trips. Hal Davis reports. Getting used to unfamiliar sights and sounds and joining in a part of the ethos of Rally Bermuda. These pictures are of young Bermudians meeting locals in Borneo two years ago. And those who've been on such trips are convinced of their value. Altogether, it just really got me going on a different perspective in life and wanting more and um, just the, the thirst for, for growth, positive growth in my life, personal life, um, work environment, everything together. Kerry went to Tanzania in 2013 and Borneo last year. Along with other alumni, she turned up to support some of the new expedition members who visited Bermuda Broadcasting ahead of the latest trip. But the organisers are keen to point out that Rally Bermuda does more than organise trips abroad. Oh, Rally Bermuda is much more than that. Actually, we are a year-long youth development program that includes a 10-week overseas expedition and service project to either Tanzania, Borneo, Costa Rica, Nicaragua or Nepal. Um, so it is a very intense year-long program where we do a lot of training, personal development, um, group and small work, work um, development, and of course expedition skills. But what we're really trying to do is give them the best opportunities to be successful on this expedition, to go and feel purposeful and meaningful while they're overseas, and to bring that energy back home to Bermuda and to become productive citizens in our own communities. What's clear from talking to these young people is that it's not just a question of self-development. It's striking how strong the bonds between the alumni and the newer recruits are. That's not to say those going on the upcoming trip don't have some worries, like homesickness and sanitation. I'm not looking forward to the whole <laughs> finding a little corner in the bushes and I don't know. But um, I suppose there's a lot more that I'm not so much looking forward to, but it's, I feel like there's a lot more positives that I'm going to find than things to dread. Like, of course, there's creature comforts that I'm going to miss, but I'm willing to give it up if it means it's going to... if 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 in order to grow I have to give up a toilet or a bed, I take it. I make me make me grow, make me change. So in some respects an ordeal lies ahead. But it's clearly an experience that all those gathered here have enjoyed and gained from. Best of luck to those traveling. Still to come, Earl Bays and we'll have all the latest sports news in just a few minutes. Sweet and juicy peaches, $2.49 per pound. Fresh assorted pork chops, $3.49 per pound. Lay's potato chips, 6.5 ounce bag, only $3.79. Crisco vegetable oil, 32 ounce bottle, only $4.29. Select varieties of friendly ice cream, 48 ounce, hot price, only $4.65. All stores open Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. Surface Terms has been serving Bermuda for over 25 years, supplying and installing tile and natural stone. We have a large and stock selection of beautiful porcelain wood planking, including our exclusive Bermuda cedar tile. You will also find Bermuda's best in stock selection of countertops, including natural granites, exotic quartzites, and sile stone engineered quartz in all the newest colors. Our team will be happy to help you. Stop by our showroom at 17 Serpentine Road or give us a call at 295-8005. Here's Earl Baisden. The sport of track and field has been tainted over the years with the allegations of widespread doping. Usain Bolt was on the island on a whirlwind tour and we asked him how he feels the IAAF president, Sebastian Coe, is handling the issue. We made it transparent so everybody could see what's going on by putting on the website, see how athletes are getting tested, how much time they get tested. Uh, he's using 
other, um, I would say, associations to help to also test us. So it's not just uh, our federation and NIWF, so it's, it's making it much easier for people to trust us uh, because when people can see it, they, they will believe more. And now it's all about the athletes to understand that uh, I've proven to the world that you can do it clean. So just focus and work hard and be determined. Bermuda CC Can swimming team is heading to Aruba for the CC Can Swimming Championships. During the final practice session prior to their departure, we caught up with national coach Ben Smith to get his take on the potential of their team. Well, the exciting thing for us is that last year was the best result ever for Bermuda at, at CC Can, and now we're in a position where we've got 20 swimmers. We had 23 qualify. Unfortunately, the dailies are not part of the team, but we have a really strong team. Um, with the results that we had from Carifta and adding in our senior athletes, we're really excited about where we're set up. Um, looking at the psych sheets, obviously we're in a position to say we potentially can do really well, but you know, I don't like to uh, say that I'm going to do something until the results have happened. The Bermuda CAC Games team was announced recently and one of the athletes selected, Tahira Butterfield, is looking forward to the opportunity to compete. Yes, I'm excited to go as I've had a great indoor and outdoor season in my last collegiate career. And I've came out of the season pretty good, running 11-6, so I know for sure that I can go 11-5 and under at CAC. And I'm excited for the competition and to represent my country once again. Daniel Phillips continued competing on the Caribbean Junior Tennis Circuit. Phillips is in Aruba competing in the TIHTA Aruba main event. Phillips has advanced to the semifinal following his second round under 14 boys straight set, 6 love, 6 love win. Rita Sailors took to the water of Mexico to take part in the Optimus North American Championships. Day one saw the 149 Sailors compete in three races held on the day. Sebastian Kemp is leading the Bermuda fleet and he is in second place with 16 net points. Kemp finished second in the first race of the day, who then crossed the line eighth in the second before closing out with a sixth place finish in the third and final race of the day. Christian Eben is in tenth place with 32 net points. Eben would win the second race of the regatta with 62 net points in is Magnus Reinstead holding down the 32nd spot, while Laura Hopman is in 37th with 70 net points. Rachel Betchard is in 59th with 95 net points, while Aiden Lopes is in 79th with 119 points. The 93rd position is being held by Ava Adams, who has 136 net points, while Azai Smith is in 96th with 141 net points. Ethan Evans is in 103rd place with 151 net points, and in the 117th position is is Amelia Lewis with 165 net points. Dalray Rollins and his Sussex Seconds teammates defeated the Hampshire Seconds by six runs in their second 11-20-20 match at the Horsham Cricket Club. Sussex would score 177 for seven in their 20 overs, with Rollins scoring four off of six balls in his seven-minute stay at the crease. In reply, Hampshire Seconds would score 171 for five. Rollins rolled two overs. He gave up 15 runs and no wickets. Kenny LeJour Jr. continued competing at the Future Masters Golf Tournament going on in Alabama. LeJour is competing in the boys' 13-14 age group division. He began the day tied 23rd. He came off the course tied 38th after his third round 7 over par 77. LeJour recorded 1 birdie, 11 pars, 5 bogeys and 1 triple bogey in his round. Adam Hall's minor league season is underway and he is playing for the Aberdeen Irons, which is a Baltimore Orioles New York Penn League team. Hall helped Aberdeen defeat Vermont Lake Monsters 5-2. Hall led off for his team, having four at-bats, scoring one run off of three hits. He also had a double and an RBI. The Bermuda Junior Men's Volleyball Team concluded competing in Chicago at the Axis Boys Summer Challenge. In their final two games, Bermuda went down in straight games 25-21, 25-22 to the ultimate B-17 Black Team. In their final match of the tournament, Bermuda went down in three games 30-28, 16-25, 16-14 to the ultimate B-17 Navy Team. I'm Earl Basden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. That's it from me. I'm Jasmine Patterson. Hope to see you at the same time tomorrow. Have a very good evening. Jasmine Patterson's wardrobe and makeup is provided by Gibbons Company.